Buckle up, everyone. You are strapped in and ready for the Insurance Hour with me, your host, Carl Sussman, informing, educating, and entertaining Californians one policy at a time. This is Insurance Hour. Hello, hello. This is Insurance Hour, and I am your host, Carl Sussman. Thank you so much for being here. We are live, as always, and you can call in now at 559-656-0317. You can also send your questions in to questions at insurancehour.com. If you need help immediately, you can grab your cell phone, dial pound 250, use the keyword insurance, and be transferred to an agent right away. Today, we have a lot going on. We have some listener questions And we're going to go through a little bit of insurance history, terminology, and some things that you might not be aware of that you really should be aware of. So let's just jump in with that right away. And then we'll take a break now and then. We'll switch between viewer comments and questions. And of course, we'll stop if anybody calls in with a question right now. And if you call in and get the voicemail, it just means the lines are busy. Please leave a message, leave a detailed message. Let us know if you're all right being on the air. We'll play your question. We'll give you the answer. Got it? Let's do it. First, let's talk about insurance. Now, I know it's your favorite subject. It's what everyone dreams about. You think about being a doctor, a lawyer, or an insurance agent, right? Doesn't everybody? Well, maybe not, but insurance has been around for quite a long time. Back in the 14th century, as a matter of fact, back in the 14th century, the first marine cargo ship from Genoa, Italy, had an insurance policy on it, which basically meant that this was a cargo ship that was going from Italy to the New World. And they were trying to find a way to protect the people that were investing in that ship. They were saying, okay, if we send out 10 ships, maybe only half of them are getting there, right? Or three quarters of them are getting there. The rest are lost at sea. And that's costing them a lot of money. It's costing them the ability potentially to even be able to keep sending those ships. So someone had an idea. They said, well, I have an idea. How about we'll share the cost with you and we'll share the profits with you. That way, if we send out the same 10 ships and only half of them go out, well, you're only going to be half out the money and, you know, you'll be protected that way. This was the beginning of insurance. And it was more of a mutual concept, right? Because people that were insuring other people had a vested interest in there not being a claim. Remember that because it's important. So when insurance began, the idea was you and I both wanted to do something and we shared in the exposure and we shared in the profits. All right, that is the the beginning of how insurance began. Later, of course, it became more of a commercial product and people that were not involved in the actual, they had no interest in what the product was or what they were insuring. They simply wanted to make money on the concept of insuring and they want to be the ones that win in the event that there isn't a claim and they would sell a policy for a premium that would pay and collect enough premium to be able to pay for those times when there is a loss, right? But remember, when this started, this was for people that were like-minded, doing something similar, and they both were going to win, in essence, in the event of not having a loss. Not one side, both sides. Now, fast forward, Lloyd's of London came into the market. Now, what is Lloyd's of London? Lloyd's of London, believe it or not, is in London. It actually still exists, and it's there as an area where people will get together and talk about and decide on risks, risks that they're willing to insure. And what does that mean? What does it actually look like? Well, it actually means that there are people that sit around in offices and other people will come to them. I know that's already shocking, but it it happens and it still happens today. And they'll say, all right, I have, for example, a whole bunch of buildings that I want to insure. They're in an area that's Risky to some extent, not risky to another extent. We want to get insurance on these buildings, right? It's a large company that's building all of these buildings. So Lloyd's, this particular syndicate it's called, which might be one particular company or group of people that have gotten together, will look at all of the documents being presented to them and they'll say, hmm, let me see. So this is how many buildings, this is what it's going to cost, and here's where it's going to be. Let's take a look at where it's going to be built. Let's take a look at Who's building it? Let's take a look at their experience in building. Let's take a look at what is the likelihood that they're actually going to finish the project, succeed, and have a building, right? Because let's face it, not all construction projects begin and finish. Some die halfway along. Some of them never get off the ground after some money's collected. So this 
syndicate or this group of people or this company in this example in Lloyd's of London in London are sitting and reviewing documents. They're sitting and trying to decide what it is about this particular risk and what should they charge. They have to decide what the likelihood is of these buildings being complete. They have to decide what the likelihood is that these buildings will not be complete. And they have to decide what is it going to cost them? How much are they going to insure it for in the event that there is a total loss? What is their maximum exposure? What could happen if all the bad things happen at once? If all of the buildings, if everything that they're insuring is completely wiped out. Remember, an insurance policy is designed to bring you back to where you were before. So it has to always take into consideration the worst case scenario. They're not allowed to say, well, maybe half the buildings might get destroyed. No, they have to be prepared for all of the buildings to be destroyed when they're coming up with their pricing structure. So these people sit and they decide and they come up with a number and they say, okay, we want X number of dollars. And based on those dollars, in the event that there's a loss, and all of these details, of course, are written out in more detail, they are going to pay this person that is looking to purchase this policy for these buildings. That's how it's worked. So you see the difference what's already happened. We've gone from an environment where people were doing the same thing. If I want to follow the same example, maybe it would be another set of people that are building buildings would say, all right, you're concerned about losing your buildings. Well, we're going to take on half that risk, but then forever you're going to have to share in the profits with us, right? It went from that to now a situation where people are sitting in a room and then they're saying, okay, what's the likelihood of there being a loss? What's it going to cost us if there is a loss? They come up with a premium amount to charge the person looking to get the insurance. And based on that premium, the person gets to decide, well, is it worth me paying this money, adding it to my expenses, adding it to my costs to know that in the event there's a loss, I have a third party, right? Not me, not my partners, anybody else. A third party that's going to come in and actually pay that claim. They're going to pay money to me to make me whole again. And that's where insurance moved on to next, that concept. Now, how it's regulated in the United States of America, that came next. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about what big landmark cases came to fruition that decided who was going to regulate the business of insurance. Who's going to be the one responsible for that? We're going to talk about that and much more right after the break. This is Insurance Hour. I am your host, Carl Sussman. Remember your questions, give them a call. <laughs> give them a call. You call in with them at 559-656-0317 or email them in to questions at insurancehour.com. We will be back in a flash. Thanks. Thanks for watching. If you found this useful, please be sure to like and subscribe for more content. And don't forget, click here to watch the next video. This show is dedicated to Shamrock Papa.